Welcome to church.
God has blessed us with a new day and we're honored to spend the morning with you. For all of our online worshipers, we're so glad you're taking time to join us virtually. Beginning April 2nd, our online worship will be streaming exclusively on YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so and turn those notifications on to receive updates when worship begins. If you're online or a person, a first-time guest, or an Oak Gardens member, please check in. Oak Garden members text CHECK to 972-372-9520. For all of our honored guests, text CONNECT to 972-372-9520 and select first-time guests. Enjoy worship. Good morning, Oak Gardens. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord and among the saints. And let me take this opportunity to say to all of our members and friends, whether you're here in person or whether you're tuning in online, what a blessing it is to worship with you. At this time, I'd ask that you join me in prayer as we go to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we come to you this morning giving thanks, Lord, to your grace, giving thanks to your mercy, giving thanks to your greatness has brought us together as a as a body of believers. Lord, we ask and pray as we move forward into the service that you bless the message that is delivered, bless the messenger, and bless those who receive your word. Lord, we ask that you not only bless us, but bless, bless all those who are gathered in the household of faith. And as always, we ask and pray that the things that we say and do here will be pleasing unto you and not unto ourselves. We ask that you guide us, keep us, and just be with us through this day. These and all things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Oak Gardens Church. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Listen, we're getting ready to sing about the freedom of the Lord. If, if you all could just stand to your feet and worship our King with me this morning. Worship our Savior, the one who has made us free, the one who has set the captives free. Come on, somebody in this place, if you are alive in Christ, come on, make some noise this morning. If you are alive in Christ in this place, if he's brought you out, come on, worship with me. Oh, hey, I want to clap a little louder than before. Oh, I want to sing a little louder than before.
even as you stand here, we worship you. We worship you. You are here, moving in our hearts, and we worship. God, 
we know and we trust you just to be who you are. If you dress the lilies, Father, how much more? If you feed the birds every day that don't have money, that don't have anything to give us, then how much more do you really love us? How much more will you make a way for us? How much more will you see us through, oh God? needs to be reminded that he makes ways in the wilderness when it doesn't look like it he'll make a river in the desert oh my god oh my god you are we make miracle work promise key light in the darkness my god that is who amazing this morning and if you would excuse me I am I'm literally I have chills because I was back there getting restored right I was back there filling up my cup because that song service was so good this morning and as we proceed with service right let's focus on that let's rest in in God and let's fill our cups up so this week when we leave church right we can go out and we can pour into somebody else because pastor day always talks about that pouring into to this community to this world so let's focus on that as we move forward this morning guys uh my name is brother Hurd. i am here to uh welcome our guests and our members alike so if you are a guest we want you to know that you are our welcome and honored guest and we are so glad that you are here this morning just raise your hand do we have any guests in the room this morning we got some over here on my left we got some over here on my right thank you guys so much for worshiping us with this with us here this morning and if you would meet us in the back after church uh we have something special for you right if you are our members uh go ahead and uh, text check to that awesome number that 972-372-9520 number uh once again if you are a member just take the time right now to text check to 972-372-9520 all right so we are going to proceed with service guys at this time at Oak Gardens, if you're not familiar with us, we are a family. This is a family here. As soon as you walk in the building, you feel that family experience, right? So every Sunday, we take about one to two minutes to just get up and hug on each other, show each other some love. So we're going to do that at this time. If you guys will get up, move around, shake those legs off, we're going to do that right now. 
Thank you, guys. Good morning, our online worshipers. We are so thankful that you are here in the Cyber Sanctuary worshiping with us. We are wanting to connect with you, and we're so thankful that God allowed us to see this beautiful spring morning where God has waking up the trees and the grass and the flowers. And just think about the power of our sovereign God, our, our Savior, who allows the same power that is waking up a tree to reside in each one of us. And that's why we have joy, and that's why we have peace, and that's why we are committed to getting to know him better, because he wants to know each one of us better. We are thankful that you are worshiping with us today. Hey, what a beautiful opportunity for us to learn our last sermon installment on focus, how we need to focus in, like you're focusing in on this camera. See, look at the focus. Oh, every time, every now and then, you have to adjust your focus to make sure you're focusing on the right thing. And we know uh, our executive pastor, Brother Carl Sherman, is going to bless us today with closing up how to focus in on what God has us to do. Hey, stay connected. We still want to hear from you. We still want to, to know who's watching, and you can do that so easily by saying connect to 972-372-9520, or if you want to check in, we would really love if you watch every week for you to check in at 972-372-9520, because we just want to have a relationship with you how far you are there's not any distance that can keep us away from doing life together hey may god bless you and keep you is our prayer Amen. it's an awesome feeling it's an awesome feeling showing somebody some love i want to take this time out to let our visitors know who are online our guests who are online uh, even if you're a member, right? Please, if you are a member and you are online, text that check to 972-372-9520. If you are online, please text that check to 972-372-9520. Even if you are online. I was online last week, right? We still got to check in. So let's do that now. Thank you. All right. So we're going to proceed forward with our service. It is now offering time. Oh, Gardens, it's offering time. Thank God for the opportunity to, to give, right? In Matthew 6, 19 and verse 21, it said so well, Do not store up treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up your treasures in heaven where vermin does not destroy and where thieves do not steal. For where your treasure is, that is where your heart will also be. If our heart is in God, if our heart is in, in heaven, right? That's what we should be giving to not storing up here on earth. We all have, you know, we all have issues with that. Storing up what we have on, here on earth, right? But we should really be putting in to what we have in heaven, right? So let's take that time to do that now. We have our brothers coming around with envelopes if you need one. There are several ways to give, right? You can text GIVE to 972-372-9520. You can use the oakgardenschurch.org or you can use a traditional envelope. We have so many ways to give, right? And if you can't give, financially volunteer the church volunteer outside the church give somebody your time right because everybody could use that we all need somebody uh, or something right so do that right and we'll go to god in prayer now over this offer dear heavenly father thank you for for always blessing us lord you are so good to us and we sometimes might seem unappreciative we may seem like we forget all that you do, Lord. Please help us to not forget that you wake us up in the morning, Lord. You give us breath. You give us sight, Lord. You give us everything that you give us, and, and we are honored. It is a blessing that you do those things for us. Please help us to not take those things in vain. Lord, help us to be better Christians. Lord, help us to get restored today while we are at church. Lord, help us to rest in you so that when we leave this place we can pour out and have all our energy so we can put it into this world lord lord we love you so much we are so honored to be your children lord bless this offering thank you for all that you are thank you for all that you do lord in jesus name we do pray amen What is that one word that if you allow God to marinate it, 
apply it, and that will help you become a more committed disciple of Christ. A word that will drive you into growing and developing into Happy Sunday and welcome to church. We're excited to worship with you today. Welcome to all our first time guests in the worship center and everyone joining us on YouTube and Facebook. Oh, Gardens family, it's time to check in. Please text CHECK to 972-372-9520 and all of our first time guests, please text CONNECT to 972-372-9520 9520 and select first time guest. For anyone still looking to connect with a small group, here are the small groups meetings this week. Remember, it's not too late to join a small group and you can find them all on the Oak Gardens website. Alpha will meet today after worship and we look forward to hearing what God is up to in those groups. Thank you for always supporting families that are in need for our food pantry efforts. This week, the food pantry item is canned chicken, spaghetti sauce, and Raymond noodles. For our toiletries, we're asking for bath soap, body soap, and lotion. Mission trip participants, you have one more week before your deposits are due. Please text Mission Possible to 972-372-9520 to reserve your spot to make your first payment. If you need additional information, please text me at jmetlin at oakgardenschurch.org. And if you want to help support those attending, you can chip in by texting Project Uplift to 972-372-9520. And Project Uplift is hosting a fundraising event on April 1st, 2023 at 10 a.m. to support the Race to 30K. This coming Saturday, join us in a warehouse to see if there is anything that catch your eye. All proceeds will support the Engadi mission trip. Life can become overwhelming at times. If you're in crisis or need someone to talk to, we now have a new spiritual care ministry designed to provide spiritual and emotional support for people in crisis. If you need help, text CARE to 972-372-9520. Easter is two Sundays away. And Dr. Day has already been preparing a sermon to talk about how Jesus flipped the script and gave us the plot twist to all of plot twists. So plan to arrive early to join us in celebrating our risen Savior. This is just in. Hey ladies, so we have decided to reschedule the Waco trip to another date. However, we're still going to get together on April the 15th. We're going to a production in Fort Worth. The play is called The Mountaintop Play. It's at the Circle Theater and it starts at three o'clock, but I want us to hang out and have lunch prior to the play. So meet me at the church at 12 o'clock for us to travel to Fort Worth. Now, regarding your tickets, you gotta go online to buy your tickets. Go to thecircletheater.com to purchase your tickets. We have a group discount. The code to use is OAK23. It will take $5 off your general price for your tickets. If you have any problems buying your tickets online, meet me in the foyer today and we'll help you with purchasing your tickets. I can't wait to see you guys on April the 15th. Bye. Sunday, April the 16th, we are announcing the Aaron Day Senior Scholarship requirements in this year opening scholarship application process. That same Sunday, we're asking everyone to wear your favorite college shirt or your alma mater shirt. May 14th, we will host the Mother's Day brunch and celebration of all of our mothers and motherly figures immediately after morning worship. There is no cost to attend, but you must text BRUNCH to 972-372-9520 to reserve your seating. Wednesday programming this week includes Bible class at 10 a.m. 
the media team is seeking additional volunteers to join the team. If you're interested in helping run the projectors, online graphics, cameras, or sound, please email csherman at oakgardenschurch.org. When you post Sunday pics to your story storyline on Instagram, tag the church and we will share them with our church stories. And to all of our March birthdays, we didn't forget about you. Stop by the cafe immediately after worship to receive your birthday treat. This morning, we will conclude our focus series with a conversation about focusing on the rest that God provides. Let's get ready to receive the word that God has prepared for us. And remember, at Oak Gardens, we do life together. there's nobody like our God just just say something to him say something to him talk to him God there's nobody like you there's nobody beside you there's only one you there's no one above you no one beside you oh God and we thank you we thank you God that there's only one name oh there is only one There is only one name with the power to save. Yeah. With the power to save. Oh my God. There is only one name. There is only one name with the power to save. just sung was there's only one name that is still able to save. If you don't mind sitting with us just for a second, our leaders are coming around. If you need communion, they will pass you out the cup to remind us of the death and burial of our risen Savior. There was a song that our sister just led about two songs ago that I think, y'all play that song, y'all play that song, that I think identifies to us what we're doing here today. One of the songs, it seems like we kind of got off beat and, and some drums was doing something, some guitars was doing something, the singers were doing something. And you know what our sister did? She stopped the whole thing to get everything back in rhythm. Now, 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 let me tell you about that. Some people, I heard two or three of y'all say amen. It, there are people around you that can always see what's wrong. But they don't celebrate when it's right. Now, 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 let me, let me tell you what communion is. Uh, sin has gotten us off beat. And, and when you sin, you're not in rhythm with God. Since Genesis 3, our drama in our life, our guitar in our life, our piano, our singing in our life are all singing four different songs. But when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it's amazing how things get back in line because he's the only conductor that can get things back in rhythm. So if your life is always missing a beat, if you're making money but still broke, if you got a honey but still can't sleep, if you got everything you dreamt of and still it is not well with your soul, you might want to start looking at, am I in rhythm with the Lord? And this, this is why every Sunday here at Old Gardens, we do communion because if you 
don't. Sometimes you can easily forget what really gets you in rhythm. That is remembering the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, so today, as we prepare to take of the communion, we want you to remember that maybe my life is out of rhythm because I've fixed everything but fixed the only thing that can save because the power is not in your bank account. The power is not in your relationship. The power is not in your job. The power is not in who you are. The power is still in his name. Let's commune together. Open up your cup. Hold your bread up. Please repeat after me. I take this bread to remember the only thing that put me back in rhythm is you offering your body as atonement for my sins. Take that bread. Open up that cup. Please repeat with me. I take this blood to remind me that I'm forgiven of sins because the power is still in your name. Take of, take of that cup. Let's pray together. God, thank you for putting us back in rhythm with you. Thank you that when our life was out of beat, you put us back in motion with you by offering up your only begotten son that we might have a right to have peace because you have provided it through Jesus Christ. Help us to recognize that there's still power in your name to get synergy between us and God so that we can live a life that's pleasing to you. Please forgive us of our sins. Thank you for allowing us to commune together. And we do this in remembrance of you. In your son's name we do pray. And all who believe said amen.
forevermore. Say it again, everybody. Just say, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. He's champion. Come on, church, can we celebrate that our God, come on, that he is a champion, he reigns forevermore. Can we thank God for our sister leading us in worship? Amen. What a gift to the body of Christ. Not only does she have a gift vocally, but I was able to spend a little time with her in the, in the, uh, in the hallway there. She informed me not too long ago she was diagnosed with prostate cancer at the age of colon cancer. I'm sorry, colon cancer. I'm sorry, honey. Okay. Colon, don't miss your blessing laughing. Right, right. amen. Boy, y'all are hard. I almost said uh -huh. something. Come back. I almost said something. And I'm trying to be delivered from that, but I almost yes, said something to y'all. <clears throat> at the age of 25. And sometimes you don't know a person's celebration until you hear their story. That's, that's why you have to be careful saying it don't take all that. It might not take all that for you because you ain't been through nothing. You 90 years old, ain't had a toothache. But sometimes God has delivered some folks. And we thank God, but there is power behind those words, isn't it? So we want to thank God. And her and her husband planted a church in Denton. And boy, I know how that feels. God bless you, honey. God bless you. So we want to pray for her and her husband, and we want to continue to pray God's healing upon her life so that she can continue to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Hey, last week we had a phenomenal time in the Lord with uh, Pastor Pointer from Nashville, Tennessee, from the Reformation Church. Didn't he do a wonderful job? I said, didn't he do a wonderful job? We thank God for him. And this morning, we are blessed with our executive pastor giving us the word this morning in the name of Brother Carl Sherman Jr. Can we celebrate and thank God uh, for him? Amen. He's going to bring the word this morning. And I asked him to be a part of this series on focus because I have seen over the last three or four years of his life a renewed focus on kingdom things on things that are above and not things that are temporal. And I thought that it would be a blessing to bring him in and uh, be a part of this series to, not bring him in, ask him to come to the stage this morning and be a part of blessing us with the Word of God. The last two weeks, I've taken a Selah. That is a pause. Um, every pastor needs a pause to recalibrate. Uh, we go through emotional trauma. How many times do you call and just say, hey, I was checking on you? Normally, it's trauma and drama. And every now and then, I'm learning as I get older that you got to take some breaks to recalibrate because if you don't uh, digest poison, you'll start spitting poison. And this last two weeks has been a blessing for me. And not only to be a part of this church, but also to hear the Word of God from people who have digested the Word of God and are blessing others with the Word of God. So can you join me in praying for Brother Sherman as he comes to prepare to give us the Word of God? And while you're already in the clapping mode, can we thank God again for our sister? We praise God for the band and everybody. Amen. It's been a rough morning, but God is good, ain't it? I drove up and Marley had a shoe on top of the hood. I said, it's going to be a long day. But I said, Marley, what were you doing last night? Come on in here and give some prayer. Yes, Amen. Let's ask God to bless us. Father God, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for Brother Sherman as he comes to prepare to give us a word uh, that is life-transforming word that makes us think, makes us change, makes us be in your presence more and live a life that would be pleasing to you. God, help us to focus better. 
Help us to be better and help us to learn that you are still the one that can change the atmosphere. You are still the one who can change the blessings of what we have today. Dear God, help us to focus on you. Thank you for this music ministry this morning. Thank you for what it's meant to those in this room and to me that has challenged us to remember that our God is great. Please forgive us of our sins. Thank you for being better to us than we would ever know how to be to ourselves. In your son's name we do pray. Amen. God bless you. Come on, let's go in this moment with worship that God will open up our hearts and open up our minds to receive the word. Somebody just lift your hands in this place. Oh, we need your spirit to break out, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, spirit break out. Break our walls down. Oh, spirit break out. Spirit break out, break our walls down. Spirit break out, heaven come. understanding oh God that we may be able to receive the revelation that we may be able to receive the word what you're speaking to us break down what we think we know about you and teach us something new oh God refresh us restore us oh God renew us send a fresh wind into this place God breathe on dry bones today God in the name of Jesus God we ask that you allow your spirit to break out in this place Spirit break out in this place. Save somebody, heal somebody, restore somebody. 
body. Spirit break out. Oh God, break all down. Spirit break out. Heaven come now. We need you. Cause we We need you. We need you. Just say it to him. Say, we need you. Come on, lift it up, church. We need you. Say, we need you. We need you. We need you. Somebody needs him to speak. Somebody needs you to deliver. Somebody needs you to heal. Somebody needs you to make a way. We all need you, Jesus. We all need you, Jesus. We need you, we need you, gotta have you, we need 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 you, Jesus. How many really need the Lord, not just today on Sunday, but every day? really need a word from God? How many need to hear his voice on today for direction, for clarity, for whatever it is that you need in your life? If you really need him, just lift your hands up and say, God, I need you. I need you to speak to me today. Break up the ground of my heart, oh God, so that I can receive the word, oh Lord. Break up the ground of our hearts and minds, Lord. We want to hear from you through your servant. And we will give your name the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. If you believe the Lord is going to speak to you. in this place at this time and just as you your spirit is falling fresh on this praise and worship I pray that you will speak through me that the Holy Spirit will give me the words to communicate to your people that I can be a conduit and a vessel of the life and lived experiences that you've given me but through our time together father that you'll be glorified that we may walk away with some practical things that may support us in the days and months and years to come Lord praying that you just show up in this place and have your way in Jesus name we pray amen Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. So we handheld. That's all right, though. That's all right, though. Good morning, Oak Gardens. Good to see each and every one of you today. It is a pleasure. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be standing in front of you. Uh, Dr. Day uh, put me on the spot. He sent me an email. Even though he was down the hall, he sent me an email. <laughs> and that email said, hey, exactly what he just shared with you all. Um, I've been observing you for the past several years, and I feel like this subject of focus you might be able to speak to, or might be able to help out. So I had the honor and privilege of speaking on Wednesday night, Wednesday morning, the first Wednesday of this month, and uh, to close out uh, the end of this series, uh, Focus. And today's topic of focusing on rest. And so y'all know, if, if, if y'all been around and y'all have heard me preach, we're not going to be here long, but prayerfully. Pray, y'all ain't have to laugh that hard, right? Prayerfully, uh, we will get a word from the Lord today. And uh, through some of the experiences he's given me, I can share out with you all. And it'll be a blessing to us all today. 
Welcome to those streaming with us online and all of those in person. The first thing I'd like to do is start out with a quote by this gentleman, Henry J. M. Nowen, uh, from a book called Making All Things New. And uh, this book is a great read. It's very short. It's quick. Uh, but in this book, he outlines uh, the distractions that we have in life, how everything's competing for our attention. And this quote is lifted from it. He says, since we're always preparing for eventualities, we seldom fully trust the moment. Has that been any of you going through life that you're always preparing for what's next? Always worried about what's around the corner? Always distracted by the trials and tribulations that face us? And we get consumed with that so much that very rarely can we trust the moment. How does that show up in our lives? There are times when things are going well. Things are going good. Things are good in the house and you just say, well, it's too good to be true right now. Things are good on the job, everything's going well in this role, and well, I know every, any day now, somebody's going to trip and it's going to be a problem. There are things that happen to us in life, experiences that we have, that get in the way of us fully embracing the present moment. He spends approximately 180 pages or so compelling us to be present and lays out the biblical uh, reasons and guidelines for why we should be present each and every day. And so since uh, focus is our title, or focus is our theme for this month, just a refresh. I know y'all know what focus means. I know you already know what it means. But just a reminder, the second definition of focus is to pay particular attention to. If you've ever been out and bought a new car, all of a sudden you notice all of your cars driving around. It wasn't that everybody bought that car in your area, right? It wasn't that everybody went out and had the same idea as you, but it's that your focus was on what you just purchased or were thinking of purchasing, right? And that's how easily our focus is drawn. It's whatever we pay attention to. And so today we're going to lift uh, for a subject focusing on rest and that rest being found in Jesus Christ. So the question I want for us to ponder this morning for just a few more moments, right? That question is this. What do you think God wants you to do with your life? Not what you want to do. Not what your family does. Not what your employer says you do. But what do you think God wants you to do with your life? The prerequisite for this is that God is our source. And we find that in Romans 11, 33 through 36. But first we'll read our text. If you don't mind standing with me for the word of God this morning, which is a familiar passage. And when Doc sent me this passage, I said, oh, Lord, I got to preach the, the scripture that we can all quote backwards and forwards, right? But prayerfully, we can get something uh, fresh out of it today. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Y'all say I lack nothing with him. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, we love you. Please speak through your word today. Speak to us. May our hearts and minds be open to hear and receive the message that you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be seated. I'm snot-nosed because uh, Emerald Campbell, I guess praise and worship leader, sang and pulled all these tears out of me. And I thank Zay for bringing tissue all the way from over there. He had the vantage point to see me wiping tears because I can remember the journey. I can remember needing the spirit to follow fresh in my life. I can remember where I was in my, in my disappointment, frustration with life. I felt for much of life that I had simply fallen into it. I felt like life was just happening around me. And although it appeared on the outside that I was on top of everything and had everything going, really when I pulled back the layers, I realized I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. I dang sure wasn't doing what God wanted me to do, if I could be very honest and transparent with you. And I wasn't happy with what was happening around my life. And God created a cascade of events to get my attention, to shake me and to wake me up and put me on this path. And that's what I want to share with you guys a little bit today. But it won't make sense if we don't have this same principle, the same core tenet 
that God is our source. And that's period. I know we got jobs, and those are resources. I know we got money in the bank, and that's a resource. You got health today, but that's simply a resource that God has extended to us. That's a gift that he's given us. He is the source for all things. And for those of you that don't believe me, we got a Bible for that. That's Romans chapter 11, verse number 33 through 36, where he says, Oh, the depth of riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? And so I guess if you've known the mind of the Lord, then you, you control the sources, right? We'll just put that caveat out there. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has even been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. God has given us everything for a reason. He's entrusted, it with, entrusted us with our gifts and our talents and everything that we possess in life that he's entrusted us to manage are at his direction and they're for his glory. And that's something I had to wrestle with. If I can be real honest and transparent with you as I, as I ain't even going to ask for permission. Y'all ain't got to nod your head or, or none of that, right? <laughs> I'm just going to tell you about my experience. And, um, and the best thing that happened to me was losing an election. Lost that election by eight votes. And for y'all that's in numbers, and God is a God of numbers, eight has significance, right? But I lost that election by eight votes. And uh, it was the best thing to happen. It was the best thing to happen because I was free. I was free to do what I wanted to do. I was free to be who I wanted to be. And in reality, I really didn't want to run for the school board in the first place. My wife can tell you, I told them, y'all got one year out of me. They couldn't find anybody. I ended up doing that for six years. I learned a lot of stuff along the way, had a ton of experiences, but at, at the core of it, it wasn't what I wanted to do. And God knew he had to remove me from that place so that I could become the healthiest version of myself. And a part of that journey, a part of that journey took me to therapy, right? So, you know, if y'all don't like therapy, you know, I, wanna, I want to encourage you to have a conversation with somebody who can be a neutral party to listen to what you have to say, to help you process information. And this therapist I was working with, she moved to L.A. And uh, so I was going back and forth to L.A. for a little bit. Anytime that I had a business trip, even if it was in San Diego, I drove the two hours to get to L.A. to have this conversation. And I know we've got some, some uh, California delegates online with us, and so they know these places, but, and I see a woohoo here. But I would stay in L.A. proper, but then I would drive to a few different places. I would drive to Manhattan Beach and spend time there, just at the Pacific Ocean, me and the Lord. I would drive up to Point Doom, and that's in Malibu. I didn't stay in Malibu while I was there. <laughs> but I commuted to Malibu and, uh, and parked at the free parking and, and walked over to this, this cliff. And this one particular time, I would start my day you know, and enough time to be in the car by 6 a.m. to get there. And I ended up sitting out there for about two hours. And then sitting there, it was just me and God having a conversation. It's that long, never-ending conversations. I don't know if any of you have had that. And in that conversation were a lot of feeling words. Lord, I feel disappointed with where I am in life. Lord, I feel like I don't know what you want me to do next. Everything's falling apart and nothing's making sense. Lord, how can you show up for me in this moment? I processed all of these things. I said it was a never-ending prayer because, you know, it was intermittent, right? It was sitting and listening and having a conversation and waiting for something to come back. It was watching the sea life out in the ocean. It was watching the sun change positions in the sky. And I left that place asking God if he would just reveal to me, just throw me a lifeline, just show me something that I could focus on him more. I could give him the attention he deserved. And so a part of that, you know, I lift for, from this text, a few things that I feel, in my personal experience, get in the way of us adequately trusting in God, therefore not accepting the rest that he provides us along the way. And so one of the reasons that we can't rest completely in trust in God is because we don't trust him enough to let go. Trust is this picture of laying down on something and trusting that it's going to hold you up. Show of hands, anybody that goes home after a long day of work and just lays half their body on the bed and considers that rest. 
Two people said, okay. We're going to pray for those two people who only put half of their body on the bed. I think the rest of us put all of our body on that bed to get the rest that we need. Why? We trust that it'll sustain us. It's a comfort to us. It's a support system to us. And trusting in God is the same picture. It's laying down our lives and trusting that he has us. It's saying, Lord, I'm not going to focus my attention on the things that you already control, that you already guide, that you already direct. And so for us today, I feel like trust gets in the way. We don't allow him to leave. We don't trust him enough to address our finances. We don't trust him enough to address our health. We don't trust him enough to address our job situations, our family dynamics. We just flat out don't trust God enough to step back and say, Lord, I'm going to turn this over to you and walk away. Right? And because we always have our hands in it, we are never able to see God completely working it out. And because we never rest, we never take time to reflect and observe what he's done to get us to that point. So the first thing that we put our hands in and don't allow him to have his way is our spiritual needs. Our lives can become busy and distracting and overwhelming, but when you depend on the Lord, you can actually receive the peace that he extends that comes to us through complete surrender. Verse number two and three of Psalm 23 says, he makes me. Some of us don't want to be made to do nothing. He makes me lie down. He leads me. Some of us don't want to be led. We don't want to be guided. We got the best way. We've seen enough. We got Google. We can look up the answer. He leads us. And then after he directs us, guides us, leads us, he refreshes us. Most of us never get to the point of refreshment because we haven't surrendered enough to allow him to make us lie down and to lead us. Not only that, but he guides us along the right paths for his name's sake. It's important to note that it's his name, his reputation that's on the line, when in fact, most of the time, we think it's our own. We take all the ownership and responsibility of life and everything that happens around us, but it's for his name's sake that he leads us, guides us, and directs us along the path that he takes us. We just got back from, uh, from Minneapolis. Um, Danielle had a volleyball tournament out there. And when we landed, it was 7 degrees. And when we left, it was 33 degrees, right? But it was a great time. It was a wonderful experience. We had a great time. And because they were playing in this volleyball tournament, we had, you know, body armor and water and all of this stuff. And we had some left over. And, uh, and we said, well, we'll find somebody to give this to along the way, right? Because you can't fly out with it. And we were checking bags. Y'all still with me? All right. You can't fly out with it. We're checking bags. And so we said, we'll see someone along the way. And on our way out, we stopped at George Floyd Square and didn't see anyone along the way there. We went over to Mall of America, didn't see anyone on the way there. Went to the gas station. Before we went to the airport, didn't see anyone there. And when we were leaving the gas station, I told, I told my wife, I said, I don't think we're going to run into anybody based on the path that we're taking. Put in the GPS, how we should get to the airport and all of that good stuff. And uh, she was giving me directions. And I'm going to blame it on the orange detour signs that I didn't listen to what she said. And I turned too soon. And turning too soon, going the opposite direction, we passed this gentleman who was sitting in a wheelchair. He had one leg. And I said, you know, do you think he can handle this water? Because it was a big bag of, of water and, and body armor and all that stuff. And we made the determination that we didn't feel like he could. Right? The light was green anyway. I said, well, maybe that's a sign. The light was green. We made the U-turn. GPS is still talking to us, telling us which way to go to get back to our destination, right? And along the way, I said, no, that don't sit well with me. I think we need to turn around. I think we're supposed to give it to him. We're supposed to see if he can, if he can handle it, right? So all the while, the GPS is screaming at me now that I've turned around going the opposite way, right? And, and I'm thankful she didn't have an attitude. She just kept saying it in the same cadence, hands on, you know. Turn around, make a U-turn in 500 feet, right? All of that good stuff. And this time, and, and I actually made a comment to Veronica, you know, I'm glad that the GPS doesn't have an attitude because GPS, what if it just said, you know, let me know when you want to get to where you're trying to go. What if, what if it just said, you know, just, just holler back at me when you're ready to get this direction. But we, but we turn back and we go back, and, and this time the light is red. We're the only car there. Roll down the window and ask him if, you know, if, if he wanted some water and power. He said, heck yeah, you know, I want it. 
and we rolled down the window. We handed it to him. He saw all of it, right? He's like, oh, man, that's a blessing, right? Fist bumps us, and we go back. But that was the Holy Spirit directing and guiding us, absent the GPS that was telling us to go a completely different way. And many times in our lives, we allow worldly GPS to direct and guide us because the Holy Spirit within us is so weak and so fragile that we're not willing to be obedient to listen to what he has to say. In that he guides us for his name's sake, you take the disposition that even if I'm a little late getting to where I'm supposed to go, even if I feel like I'm not where I'm supposed to be, even if I feel like life is not going the way it needs to go, it's just a mindset to say the Lord has got me because his name is on the line. And so God is very much interested in our spiritual needs, and we have to take a step back and allow him to do so. The next thing that gets in the way is our emotional needs. This is where we like to spend a lot of time, right? emotionally. I feel like they did me wrong. They don't know. I gave that job all the best years of my life and this is how they gonna do me. I gave that spouse all of this time in my life and they did me like that. I pour into my children. I spend money on them and this is how they gonna treat me. Those emotional things that pop up God is even interested in. And David being a shepherd is able to speak keenly to us through this description. In verse number four he says even though I walk through the darkest valley I will fear Fear is what gets in the way. Fear of failure. Fear of disappointment. Fear of being let down. Fear that things will not work out the way that we plan for them to work out. Get in the way of us enjoying the comfort that he provides. And you can't skip over what's in between because that comfort comes through two things. He said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. A lot of times we see that rod and that staff and we try to take off running. Wants no parts of that. Don't want the Lord to pull us closer. Don't want him to put more responsibility on us. Don't want him to call us to a deeper level of commitment. And that rod, we always want to beat off the enemies and the haters and the the people that mean us no good, right? But that staff, Lord, don't pull me closer to a a deeper commitment to you. Lord, I'm not ready to be responsible for all that you're entrusting me with. And we choose fear over life circumstances, over the comfort that comes through God. He paints a picture that God is, uh, is interested in showing up for us in our most dangerous, vulnerable situations and points in life. The shepherd would use the rod to fight off the attacks of the enemy. He would use the staff to protect the sheep and to guide them. The question we must ask ourselves is when we're in the darkest valley, one, is God there with us? His word says he is, but the other question is, are we with him? Because sometimes we like hanging out in the darkness because we like the comforts of the darkness. Sometimes we bring the darkness to the situation. So we've got to ask ourselves, is God showing up in the midst there? And what I found is emotions are one of the greatest barriers to experiencing a deeper walk with Christ and allowing him to show up in our lives. Because those emotions are what gets in the way and drives our spiritual development. It blocks us from experiencing the comfort that he has for us. And David is able to communicate that our our emotional needs are met when we choose comfort over fear. I told you about that time I was sitting out at Point Doom and uh, in Malibu and, and having this conversation with God. And the very next day, one of my mentors who stays in Compton, this is for our, our California delegates, right? Um, he stays out in Compton and he was out of town. But uh, when I told him I was in L.A., he came back a day early, and we did lunch together. Uh, Now, I didn't pack to do lunch. I didn't have the clothes to do lunch, right? So I went to TJ Maxx and bought me a shirt and bought me some jeans, right, and got ready to, to go to this lunch that I was unsuspecting of why he came back in town early, why we were supposed to be meeting today, but I was appreciative of it, right? For me, he's a mentor, so that was a free lunch for me, right? And he took me to this place that, you know, I couldn't afford any of the cars there, the Porsche experience, right? But if you get past the cars, there's a little cafe in there, and the food is actually really reasonable, right? And we're sitting out there, and we're having lunch, and um, before I went in, because I got there a little early, I prayed and asked God to speak through me and give me what he wanted me to say, what he wanted me to communicate. And what that led me to do in our conversation was open up emotionally to share what I was feeling to share where I was, to share what I was do- dealing with, right, in my personal life. 
And it's crazy that he answered the prayer that I prayed to God almost to the T of what I was asking for. And through that, that was one of the turning points for me in my marriage to my wonderful wife who is loving and, and amazing. And I thank her for being with me on this journey. It led me to show up as a better husband, a better father. It put me back on the path to lead me where I needed to be. And it changed my perspective. Now, the problem with us, though, and the problem with me leading up to that point is, very rarely do we have anyone we can share our emotions with. Very rarely can we be open and transparent about what's going on in our lives. And because we're not willing to share out what we're dealing with, we can't receive what God is trying to give us. Because we haven't completely surrendered to say, Lord, you know what? You got this. I don't clearly. How can I speak to those around me who may be able to pour into me, who may be able to support me? And in that moment, he did. You really can't receive the resources God has for you until you're willing to be transparent about what you need. It's tapping into those emotions, choosing comfort over fear. The other thing he's interested in is our physical needs. Our physical needs. Verse number five says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. God is willing to meet our physical needs, but if we see through life, if we see life through spiritual eyes, we can actually see what he's doing and shifting around us to bring us closer to where he is, where that comfort can be found. In reflection, David could recall the times. You know, David was the first Mr. Steal Your Girl. Bathsheba. <laughs> David committed murder. We can say it wasn't his hands, but at his direction. David had his own issues going on. But at the end of it, David can reflect on this point. He said, Lord, you prepared me. Now, I wouldn't advise any of us to go to Yellowstone and pick a fight with a bear. I wouldn't advise anyone to find the person who told you on site next time to just walk up to him and have a conversation. But David's experience could tell him that through it all, God's hand of protection and guidance had been on his life. And so if we see with spiritual eyes, we can see that God has placed people strategically in our lives and prepared us with life experiences, with those conversations to support us so that we can receive the overflow that comes through our service to him. And he's anointed us even in those moments of disappointment and frustration. He's provided for us. He's healed us in a way that only he can do. And remember that God's resources and the ability to solve our physical needs will always trump the attacks of the enemy. Even as we're going through life, sometimes it feels like, you know what, it's just not clicking. It's just not moving the way I expected it to. And, and, and for me, a part of this journey for us as a family was we had looked out, we said we wanted to move. We picked out the neighborhood we wanted to move to. We picked out the community we wanted to go to. And as life started to fall into place, I had conversations with people and, and, and was a consultant for a company. And we had this deal done, I thought. The deal would have paid for the house. The deal would have allowed us to move. Everything was good, and I'll never forget. Veronica was out doing training in, in Phoenix, and the kids were with me. And y'all, leading up to this move, uh, uh, Tori, you, you and I had conversations about it. Leading up to this move, we spent time in that community. So we would drive 40 minutes to go get ice cream, just to get the energy and the vibe of the community, right? We go eat over there. We go spend time in that neighborhood. And uh, this one particular time, we're driving, we were going to get food at Jake's on 360 and Broad. Yeah, he said, that's good. The kids don't like it. They said, let's not ever go here again. But, <laughs> but we're going, and I get this call, this deal that I thought was done, this deal that I thought God was leading to provide for our family, to shift our trajectory, to move us to where I felt we needed to be. And uh, this deal that everyone said, man, this is the smoothest deal we've ever done. Everything's flowing. Everything's good. He called me to let me know that it had fallen apart. And in that moment, y'all, man, it was rough. It was rough sitting across from the table with my, with my kids telling them, you know, the Lord, he, he got us. It's going to be all right. You know, it's, it's, we're in a good place. And he never, you never go back at people. Don't repay evil for evil, right? Having all those conversations. Man, I got in that car on the way home with them. 
Man, I'm telling you, uh, you know, we put on praise and worship music. I'm singing all off key, you know, all that stuff. The closer we got to the house, I started crying. Kids in the car, they ain't know how to respond, you know. And, and I love my boy. He was, he was 13 at the time. We get ready. We walk in the garage and get ready to come through the door. He just turns around and gives me a hug and says, you know, Dad, it's going to be all right. And I was appreciative of that in that moment, right? But the reality is what I was trying to solve our physical needs with wasn't what God had for us. And then you fast forward a few months, and God just set it up where we kept going down this path, right? We found a house. We put in an offer on the house. We went and visited the house. It was a house that everybody loved. They went in, found their rooms, Doc. They were excited about it. It's right across the street from the high school that they're going to be at, right? Everybody's feeling good. At the time, there were no offers in. And when we put in an offer, they said, well, there's one in front of you. So we're like, man, what's going on? We went and prayed in front of the house, right? Like, they said, we'll let you know money. We went Saturday night, Sunday, like, Lord, if it's your will, let this house be ours, right? <laughs> All of that stuff. You know, kids sitting in the back, like, what's going on? In my mind, I'm like, Lord, don't put me on the spot like this because I serve you, I trust you, and don't let this fall apart. And as God will have it, it didn't go through. And what we didn't know was that I would tear my Achilles a few weeks later. <laughs> And the cost savings we needed to be in the house that we ended up being in was exactly what God had in store for us, right? But if I had been willing to chase him down so much so that I wasn't willing to surrender to his will and continue to try and make it mine, like we often do with our physical needs, wants, and desires, we would have never been able to experience the blessing that we have in this place that we are. God is always interested in our physical needs. The question is if we're interested in him being involved in them. And so if we remember that God's resources and ability to solve our physical needs will always trump the attacks of the enemy, we'll be in better shape. And the last thing that God tells us through David, this psalm here, is that God is interested in our eternal needs. Verse number six says, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God directs and designs our lives in a way that lead us to our eternal promise. And oftentimes, if we had it our way, we would miss our eternal promise because it's not the way we want to go. That's right. That's right. It's not the way we want him to lead us and guide us. And love and goodness, you know, I don't believe in, in what the previous generation told us. I beat you because I love you. Like, you know, that, I don't subscribe to that, right? That just didn't. That didn't suit with me. Grandma used to say, I'm only getting on you because I love you, right? And, and whoop you in that sense. Um, but I do believe that love takes on many different forms. And one of those is correction. <laughs> one of those is guidance, right? And feedback. And, uh, and, and it's awkward because the kids are in here. They told me this one. I said, y'all ain't want to go to youth church? They said, no, we want to hear you. And so I'm going to tell the story in front of them. <laughs> and they'll be all right because they've heard it before. But, you know, thanks be to God, I haven't, to, I haven't had to physically whoop either of them in a minute. It's been a minute since they've gotten a whooping, and, uh, and I know we're online, and I'll just say, these uh, views don't reflect Oak Garden's church. This is me speaking for myself. And I thank God for a wife who's on the same page, right? And we knew early on we had to break their will. Terrible twos didn't last long in our house because we knew terrible twos led to terrible threes, fours, fives, sixteens, eighteens. And, and so we, we, we went hard for the first few years. And, uh, and so they got a healthy respect for us. That's why the look is effective, right? And we ain't got to say, we ain't got to count down three, two, one. No, just. <laughs> And they already know. <laughs> right? And so we, we haven't <laughs> we haven't had to whoop them in a while, right? But there are some times where they, they mess up, they trip out, they, you know, they start tripping and all that. Now we're at a point in our lives at 14 and 13 that we're speaking more, we're communicating, and we tell them, you know, hey, the choice is yours. And, and you got to live with the consequences. And you take comfort in the decision you're going to make. But just know as parents, we're going to take comfort in doing what we got to do. 
And there are buffers, right? And so, I mean, very transparent with them and telling them. And they kind of look at you like, but tell them, listen, it's going to fall between two zones. One, it's not going to be so severe that you hate me. It's not going to tear you up. But it's going to hurt to the point that you never want to do that again. And if we're honest with ourselves, God has given us responses in life that fall between those buffers. It didn't destroy you. It didn't take you out. But prayerfully, it got your attention enough to know that you don't ever want to do that again. In order to fulfill and find the eternal results that God has for us of dwelling in his house and in his presence, we've got to know that love sometimes is chastisement. Love sometimes is breakthroughs. But one thing is for certain, that what accompanies the love is his goodness. And his goodness will follow us all the days of our life. And so... Our goal should be to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the only way to realize that eternal goal is to acknowledge that God is willing and able to cover not only our spiritual, emotional, physical needs, but also that he's already provided a solution for our eternal needs as well. And so, you know, the story for me has been a story of restoration. It's been a journey of, of several years of getting to this point. But if I could just say one thing to us it would be this quote from Clive Kaiser who said God wants you to be it's not about his direction it's about his presence wait for him to lead and you just follow he has led me down some interesting paths but the one thing that I've come to experience and appreciate is his presence being along the way and if you can I'm telling you, if you can ever get to that sweet spot where you just feel him and the conversations around him, you just feel him showing up to give you the words to say. You just feel him and how he guides the conversations around you with your employer, with your family, with your friends, with your circle of influence. That's a space you never want to leave. And so here are a few things that we can do to focus a little bit more and to experience the rest that God has for us. First, trust God to cover your spiritual needs. Trust him to cover your emotional needs. Trust him to cover your physical needs and those eternal needs. And the last thing is surrender to the Spirit. Surrender to the Holy Spirit in your life. And sometimes he'll call you to do things that don't make a lot of sense. Sometimes he'll cause you to show up and be present in a way that you didn't anticipate, didn't appreciate, right? Because it called you out of your comfort zone. But go with the Spirit. Go with the Spirit and allow him to lead you. And lastly, fast to be closer to God. Y'all, um, I've got a prayer partner, Ron Wayne, and... Um, great guy and I was having a conversation with him this week y'all know we've been out of town and coming back it was hard to get the rhythm like Tuesday Wednesday it just felt like things were off I couldn't put my finger on it couldn't trace it and then finally I realized oh doc asked me to preach this week and so everything on focus was what was being attacked in my life right to focus on him, to focus on that rest. And so he said, you know what, man, I think we should fast, you know, because I got something similar going on, let's fast. And so we fasted from Thursday night up until this morning. I had breakfast, and it was good, right? It didn't matter what it was. But, um, but through that process, I asked God for some very specific things. I asked him to show up in my life and communicate to me in a way that only he could, and, and I don't want to scare anyone, so I'm not going to go into detail unless you got questions on it. We can talk in the foyer, but fasting and surrendering to him, he showed up and provided me the answers in which I was seeking. Not only did he show up in my life, he showed up in my brother Ron's life in a way that he was able to see. And, uh, and if you're in a space in your life where you feel like, man, I, I just feel like there's a glass wall in front of me, I can't break through, I want to encourage you to fast. It doesn't have to be food. Fast from that thing that takes your attention away from God. Fast from the thing that you feel like will allow you to draw closer to him and watch what he does in your life. And so uh, this morning, wherever you find yourself, you know, I, I always feel like this is an awkward point um, in the service for me. It's always awkward, Doc, when you put the pressure on me and, and have people celebrate, right? That's, that's, uh, that's for me, extremely awkward. But um, as our deacons and elders come down to receive those who need prayer, I want to encourage you that wherever you are in your life, if you're dealing with things that you feel like you just can't put your finger on, you're dealing with things that you feel like you need God to show up with, if you're suffering from loss of loved one, if you are worried about this crazy economy that we're in and these bank failures and, and whether you're going to have a job next week, 
if you're concerned and you're an educator because people are going to charter schools now and public schools are not as big as they once were and so there's trouble on your job there's fear and anxiety in your life i want to encourage you to come down front and have someone join you in prayer for those things if you're worried about health issues just no matter what your fear point is i want to encourage that as we pray after we pray that you come down front and make your request known so that we can pray for you on your behalf and join you in those things. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for showing up in this place. Thank you for reminding us of the power of your Holy Spirit, the resurrection power that lives within each and every one of us. We thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray um, that through my obedience and communicating the things that you shared with me, that it will reach those who need to hear it, that it will be a blessing to them, that it will be a model of a fresh word that may be able to rest, rule, and abide in our lives and that we may completely trust in you in the days and weeks and years to come, that we may completely surrender to you and allow you to guide us and, and focus on the rest that comes with you leading us to the place you would have us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother, Sister Coleman, can I, I need your help. Yeah. Amen. Brother, Sister Callahan, Brother Montgomery, your wife, if you don't mind. Amen. Prayer time. spend this time right now saying are you am i close to god am i really surrendering to him am i letting everything go that i try to control god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you am i really letting it go we are not alone we are not alone you are our comfort jesus Said they comfort me. You always hold us close. Come on, say hallelujah. We're not alone. We're not alone. You are our comfort. And you always, you always, you always. God is messing with you right now, isn't it? God is messing with you right now. Let him, let him have his way. Let him have his way. You always hold us close. For your spirit lives within us. Your spirit guides us. Your spirit leads us. Say hallelujah. You live within us, oh God. And you lead us. You're on in your staff. They comfort us. You lead us and you are. You know what one thing I learned out of that lesson? That there is a fight that I lose every time and it's against God. I've beat people, but I've never beat God. So if you are wrestling with God, you're gonna lose. But what Brother Sherman taught us today, 
is that life will take you through those ebb and flows so that when you submit, you start winning the right way. What a word this morning. Can we celebrate? That was for me. That was for me. Woo. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Church is good to jump. But transformation takes place when you have to think. You know, I, I love our culture. We love to celebrate. And we need to celebrate. But sometimes you got to be renewed by the way you think. Because I can dance all day, but if I go back out in my toxic way, then I need next Sunday to dance again. Because dancing can be a numbing mechanism. But when you say, I'm going to leave here different than the way I came in, I got, I got to change something. In the morning, I'm going to wake up and pray instead of waking up and getting on Facebook. In the morning, I'm going to say, God, thank you for what I have instead of saying, how can I get more? It's a mind process. And what a blessing we had this morning to be challenged by the way we think, by the way we process. Can we celebrate Brother Sherman? Amen. Amen. God bless. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. My, my, my. What a word. What a word. That, that was one of those words that stay with you, that you have to keep messing with because it's going to keep messing with you. What a beautiful thing. And we thank God that you got out of focus this week because you could teach us what focus looks like. And we celebrate you for that. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for all of those who have come down this morning. And we want to celebrate God for them because we still believe that in praying for them, it also returns help us because there'll be a day when you'll be down. I, I never thought I would need to repent. Because I came out of a system that I was right. But boy, I ask for forgiveness more now than I ever have in my entire life. And we just thank God for those who have the willingness to open up their heart and really surrender to God and allow God uh, to use them. Real quick, I also want you to celebrate our beautiful sister, Sister Emerald, who led us. Amen. God bless you. Don't you leave here without bathing her and Sherman in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you don't treat her right, she won't come back. She won't come back. We want her to come back and we praise God for her ministry uh, this morning. Real quick, we got some great things going on here at Oak Gardens. But sometimes the Holy Spirit can't work because we cocoon ourselves. And sometimes we expect the Lord to come and knock your door in and pull you out and say, I'm going to bless you. Some of these small groups that we have are blessings. You just got to be willing to open up your heart to be a part of them. Some of the, some of the uh, ministries that we have, yesterday 28 men went out to go fish. And it really wasn't about to fish. It was about another F, the fellowship. Just to find out, man, I'm struggling. You're struggling. And we just opened up and shared. I taught them how to fish. And after we got that together, then the fellowship was just... Uh, beautiful, beautiful, allowing God uh, to use them. But, but what I wanted to say is there's some great things happening. Our married couples went out to bowl yesterday with Samantha and Joe did a phenomenal job leading that. <laughs> what I'm saying is you can have a membership to a gym and not get stronger. You can, you can pay for it monthly and never grow from it because participation is the key. And all of these things that, that we have, Wednesday night Bible class, men's Bible class, women's Bible class, is for the ability for you to do what Sherman just preached to us. Be drawn closer to God. So that's the intent. That's the goal. Not to be doing stuff, but to be intentional about what we do. So that you and I can say, life will come. But what resides in me is greater than that thing that's trying to change me. That being a part of a relationship with God is the key of all we do. Amen? All right, so you want to get in where you fit in. Our leaders will be at the door uh, welcoming you and praying for you. If you did not want to come down, they will be there to pray for you and guide you. Our uh, worship, our prayer team is still on the wall. Brenda and all of those. 
a part of that we want to and brother warren and all of those a part of that want to be there and uh, be there to pray for you if you're visiting today we would love for you to become a part of the family you can do so so easily by going to the connect room and they will be there to minister to you or if you're online or in this place and don't want to go to that room you can easily text 972-372-9520 just put in the word connect one of our staff members will reach out to you this week to uh, get to know you deeper and get to know you better what a blessing it was for us to be here today Amen. I'm going to do better off of hearing the word of God. And we love the teaching style of the ministry uh, of what he did for us this morning. Come on, let's pray. And let's do our statement and then we'll all be ready to go and pour out what's been poured in. God, thank you that you taught us this morning through Psalms 23 how to rest, how to reflect, how to restore, and even how to renew. Thank you for our worship leader this morning. Thank you for Sherman who blessed us this morning. Just thank you for being in the house this morning. We needed this. I needed that word to help me to re re refocus on the things that are right to do. Help us all to have that spirit this morning. God, as we leave here today, help us to not just be moment worshipers. Help us to be eternal worshipers that every day we recreate a new refocus so that we can always stay in your presence thank you for an opportunity to be with you this morning but God we invite you to invade our space fix the stuff that we don't need eradicate the stuff that's holding us back and dear God pull up the things that we know that we learn from a young age that needs to be the center of our focus. If we seek ye first and do right, all these other things shall be added um, to each one of us. Thank you for this moment. In your son's name we do pray. And all who believe said, Amen. Come on, church, at Oak Gardens. At Oak Gardens. What do we do? We do life together. May God bless you and keep you, is our prayer. Well, just like that, the last Sunday in March has come to an end. We hope today's lesson and time of worship helps set the tone for you and your family this week. If we can pray for you this week, text PRAYER to 972-372-9520 and let us know how. See you next week at 930 Central.